Uh, Gwania, so you're going for a four in a row, absolutely unprecedented. Tell me about your team. Um, well, we're a very motivated, hard um, driven team, I suppose. We're lucky that we have the calibre of players that we do have as well to get back to our fourth All-Ireland final, which is fantastic. Um, but I suppose we're just motivated and hungry and um, just a great great bunch of girls to work with. So it's... Uh, You're very modest as well. We have to throw that in. So uh, just like the work that's been done in the club, like because things like that don't just happen coincidentally. So much must go into um, getting to that stage because like, it really is phenomenal. That's it. There's a huge emphasis on our underage, um, Harlan football and Camogie. And I suppose it's down to those managers that are happy to put in the, the hours of hard work um, and learning the basic skills and going over and over at a, a night after night, week after week, um, which has really now paid off for us as a senior team coming through. Like I say, the three codes even being as successful as we have been in recent years is all down to years of hard work it's not just doesn't happen overnight doesn't happen just in one year two years it's just committing to it um year in and year out so definitely a lot of hard work and a lot of um sweat has went into the club over the years but it's thankfully now paying off the pitches must be flat out and use early <laughs> yeah well, one of them's a real mud bath at the minute i think it's it's out of order at the minute um but all of, very busy any night of the week that you go up to the club it's just a real hub that everybody comes together um, from underage right through to seniors you would see them all out training maybe a Friday night or a Sunday morning is always the, the busiest times um, but sure it's great to see that's what you want mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it so tell me about your journey as a team like when did you make the breakthrough um, well, really, we didn't we didn't win our first dairy championship until two thousand and twelve, which um, is amazing. Then to think now that we're on, are competing for our fourth All Ireland, which has really been a, a huge breakthrough. And even at that stage, to win dairy was just amazing, which was brilliant. Um, and then to go on, we were beaten for two years coming into Ulster, um, and then making that Ulster breakthrough four years ago was something a huge achievement um, which had been really a goal for the whole panel and management and club at that stage um, so then to go on ahead and win the All-Ireland that year four years ago was just amazing um, and then really we started started from scratch again um, aiming to get out of Derry nothing comes easy nothing comes um, without the work and the effort and really you're trying then to up your game after you win an All-Ireland you don't you don't take the foot off the pedal, pedal, you have to just keep getting better. Um, so in the last couple of years, it's just been um, improving yourself as an individual, improving ourselves as a team. Um, and then we've been fortunate enough just to keep the ball rolling and, and getting through Ulster and um, coming through to All-Ireland then as well. So it's been great. Athletes say that they often learn more from losing, but you haven't been losing in a while. <laughs> not in a while, but we've had our fair share of defeats as well. Um, it's not that long ago that we were getting beat, like I say, before in Derry Championships and that we were beaten, beaten off the pitch as well. Um, and I suppose those two, with that heart, heartache of getting beat at Ulster, um, was something that was a learning curve and it was maybe a bit of a motivational um, time as well that we had to sit down as a group and think, are we... What are we missing? What do we have to improve on? And, and really focus on, on those things as well. So that probably, coming back, looking back at it now, was a very very much a learning curve and um, have learned a lot from that. So what are the key things that you focus on as a team to achieve success? Um, well, we all maybe individually have your own list of things that you know as a player that you have to imp- improve. Um, and our management are very good at keeping coming to you and, and telling you what, what kind of things our basic skills that you as an individual could improve on and then as a team we work around just our team plays and that um, we have a brilliant management in place who are very good at focusing on the, a game plan as such um, and are really just building around that so sorry I actually forget what the question was <laughs> I do that all the time start talking and then forget it's fine you actually answered it so it's really it was okay yeah. so. just on like going all year round because when you keep getting to the finals and you keep winning finals like it does become a year round thing and you never really get to take time off and we know that it's quite difficult to keep females in sport after mm-hmm. a certain age and keep them interested I'm sure winning helps but how do you do it how do you maintain a squad all the time um, we actually had this conversation just casually in the bus um, a few weeks ago um, among the girls, but really you maybe give off that you're giving up a lot of time, that you're training constantly, you're at the gym constantly, but we're all very maybe 
competitive people. We all like to be active. We all like to be um, keeping fit. So really, whenever you're together as a team, it just makes those things easier. Um, that if we hadn't got Camogie, what else would we be doing? Um, so it's just, it's nice to come together as a group of players and you're focusing on the same goals. You're trying to make each other better. Um, so it's great. It kind of motivates you within the squad that you're doing it for one another as well as just for yourself. Um, or you're doing it for the whole community as well. But um, in terms of your commitment on that, I suppose the, the boys are good at balancing um, after the All-Ireland series that we will have a break as such. Um, but the Dairy League will start again in April time. So we'll be expected to go out and perform during the league. But there won't be any tough trainings or that until hopefully the summertime. Maybe. Um, but it's a big commitment, but fresh girls coming onto the panel this year especially um, was something that motivated me. You've seen their energy, their buzz, their hunger to get onto the panel, never mind onto the starting 15, which was really something that maybe it was nice. It was refreshing to see those young girls coming in with that energy and it kind of just feeds, that spreads through the team as well. So keeping that hunger um, hasn't necessarily been a hard thing. It's just um, keeping one another going really. You've also put Ulster Camogie on the map as well, which is mm. um, another impressive part of, of your feat because you're showing that it doesn't matter where you're from if you put in the work and you know have the players that you compete with anybody from any of the traditional yeah. hurling counties. Um, absolutely, and even within Derry itself, we've noticed that the standard of Camogie has improved even in recent years. Last year, it wasn't easy for us to come through Derry where it maybe had been before, um, where that gap is narrow, and that's really that's the result at the end of the day. That's what you want. You want more competitive games in your county, and then going on to Ulster as well has been fa fantastic. Um, so really that recognition and that um, belief, probably it comes from a wee bit more belief in yourself and... A, and um, confidence in Ulster teams to come through and, and really give it a fair shot, which is good to see. Do you think that the GAA, like, um, including Camogie in that, that they need to be doing more to promote um, hurling and Camogie in Ulster? Um, yes, I do. I just think lady sports in, in general. I know there is a big push at the minute. Um, the 2020 um, motivation or the, the, the aim between, behind it, trying to get it out there on media, trying to get social media on board, getting it on TV, radio, all the publicity, which is definitely improving, um, but it still could be better. But I think the lady sports definitely deserves a lot more recognition. Um, the same work, the same effort goes into it. Um, and it is as enjoyable to watch as any of the other sports. So I think it's getting better, but it could probably improve a wee bit yet. And what about just like camogie and hurling? In Ulster, does it need to be promoted more? Do they need to put... Um, more of a push behind it so that they can compete at the top level all the time? Um, probably, <laughs> I think it would do no harm. Um, it's something that, again, come back to confidence that an Ulster team can compete at those levels. Um, and I think any publicity would be a positive impact, especially on young people trying to get them motivated and get them involved in Hurling and Camogie um, and showing them that there are leaders out there that can go ahead and, and compete at a higher stadium. Your club are probably the perfect example of how to do that because you compete at all codes. <laughs> yeah, but, um, well, well, that's that. The three codes have kind of been successful at one time, which has been good, and the media have covered it very well. Um, so it, it definitely is, but I don't think there's anything Slat Neil are doing differently from any other GA club all over the country. So, um, But it's nice to get that wee bit of confidence or recognition for the work. So what do you do then, like when you're not uh, training or training games or <laughs> playing games? Um, not a while, pal. <laughs> Relaxing. <laughs> um, well, I not not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I know. Um, well, just at the minute, you probably don't have a lot of free time to be doing anything. You're happy whenever you've a night off to just relax and and spend time with family and friends. Um, maybe that you don't get to spend a lot of time with because you are training or constantly on the go. Um, so when the camogie's over, maybe have a bit more of a social life back again. <laughs> so the final, <clears throat> you are facing familiar foes. How are you feeling mm -hmm. about it? Uh, feeling good. Looking forward to it at this stage now. Like you said, it's been a long year, so coming around now to the finals, just an exciting time. The hard work's done, preparation's done. Um, it'll be no easy task, so just need to get or, or get in control of it and be prepared for a good, tough game. What are you expecting from them? 
Uh, big challenge. <laughs> um, I expect a good quality game of Camogie. Um, Sarsfields, we've played them before and we know that they are quality Camogie players. They'll be coming at us all guns blazing. So expecting just a good, tight, hard-hitting game. Does it help that you have that winning experience? Um, probably and probably not. There are a lot of girls coming into the panel this year that this will be their first time ever starting or coming into Croke Park. So it will be a new experience for them and just hoping that everybody else's calmness or being in control will kind of rub off on them and that um, we can control their nerves going into it. I imagine the whole village will be there. Oh, I absolutely everybody. <laughs>